This wrecker is on its way to assist a vehicle which has skidded into a ditch. This job can best be accomplished by the M62, a medium wrecker. It is a standard five-ton chassis on which special powered equipment has been mounted. For proper use of the wrecker, a knowledge of the procedures for setting and operating the controls of the equipment is necessary. The wrecker's powered equipment consists of three major components. The boom, the rear winch, and the front winch. Once the wrecker has been positioned for use of the boom, preliminary steps are necessary for its operation. First, set controls in the driver's cab. Lock the wheels by applying the service brake, and then depressing the micro brake lock switch to prevent the truck from rolling during operation of the boom. Now depress the clutch in order to shift the transfer case lever to neutral. Shift the transmission to fifth gear. Engage the power divider. Now set the controls for the boom on the rear of the wrecker. Open the clutch air control valve to permit engagement of the hydraulic pump. Engage the hydraulic pump. Close the clutch air control valve to provide power to the hydraulic pump. Open the throttle slowly until the governor is controlling engine speed. In the meantime, a chain sling has been attached to the disabled vehicle. Movement of the boom is controlled from the crane cab. Push the hoist control lever forward to lower the hook so that it can be disengaged from the bridle. The boom jacks must now be disconnected from the wrecker bed. Then the boom must be raised so that the boom jacks will clear the wrecker bed. Next, the boom jacks are secured to the boom shipper by pinning them in place. As the situation requires, the boom may be swung to the right or left. In this case, in pushing the boom swing control lever away from the operator, it moves to the left. By pushing the hoist and cloud control levers away from him, the boom is extended, and enough hoist cable is paid out to prevent damaging the boom. Push the hoist lever forward to lower the hook so that it can be connected to the object to be recovered. Pull the hoist control lever toward you to raise the hook. After the assistant is clear, the hoist control lever is again pulled back to raise the vehicle. When the recovered vehicle is returned to the road, the hook is disengaged. Then all controls and equipment are returned to their normal position for road operation. For heavy stationary lifts, the wrecker must be stabilized and supported. Outriggers support the body. They are located on both sides of the wrecker bed. 
boom jacks support the boom. From here on, the procedures for operating the boom are the same, except that the boom cannot be swung with the boom jacks in position. To repeat, here again are the procedures necessary to operate the boom. Set the brakes using the foot pedals and micro brake lock switch. Shift transfer case to neutral and the transmission to fifth gear. Then engage the power divider. On the rear, open clutch air valve, engage pump, close air valve, and slowly open throttle. In the crane cab, pushing the control levers away from the operator moves the boom assembly away from him. To move the boom assembly toward operator, pull control levers. To prepare for operation of the rear winch, first set controls in the driver's cab as follows. Set the brakes by depressing the foot pedal and the micro brake lock switch. Shift the transfer case to neutral. Shift the transmission to third gear, which is used for a heavy load. Fourth or fifth gear would be used for light load. Engage the power divider. The next step takes place at the rear winch assembly. The leveling device lockout is pulled out and the operator moves to the winch control area. While the men prepare to unhook the cable, the operator makes sure the cable tensioner control valve is off. Open the clutch air control valve, cutting off the power flow. Shift the winch control lever to payout position. Close the clutch air control valve. Slowly open the throttle as needed, not to exceed 1,000 RPM. Because the rear winch cannot be free spooled, the cable must be paid out with power. If the load is too heavy for a direct pull, as in this case, a two-to-one hookup may be used. This can be done by attaching a snatch block to the object of recovery. After the cable is looped through the snatch block sheave, it is secured to the rear of the wrecker. With the cable hooked to the ring on the rear of the wrecker, shift the winch control lever to pay-in position and apply the cable tensioner. Close the clutch air valve to pay-in cable. After recovery, all controls and equipment are returned to their normal position for road operation. Let us review the procedures for operating the rear winch. In the driver's cab, set micro brake lock and shift transfer case to neutral. Transmission to third gear. And engage power divider. On the rear of the wrecker, Release or apply cable tensioner. Open the clutch air control valve. Shift winch control lever to payout position. Open throttle as needed, not to exceed 1,000 RPM. If this wrecker becomes bogged down, its front winch may be used for self-recovery. To prepare for operation of the winch at the front of the wrecker, Disengage the winch drum lock knob. Engage winch drum clutch to permit winch to be powered. Disengage the leveling device lockout. 
Disengage lockout and move cable tensioner to release the position and lock. In the driver's cab, shift transfer case to neutral. Shift transmission to neutral. And shift the winch control lever to reverse to pay out the cable. Using the throttle lockout, regulate the engine at a steady speed not to exceed 1,000 RPM. Here the cable is shown being paid out under power. It is also possible to free spool the cable. In this case, the object of recovery is the wrecker itself and the cable is secured to a firm anchorage. Now the cable tensioner is applied by hand. In the driver's cab, shift the winch control lever to low to pay in the cable. As the winch drum pays in the cable, the wrecker moves toward its anchorage. After recovery, all controls and equipment will be returned to their normal position for road operation. Now let us review the operation of the front winch. Unlock winch drum. Disengage winch drum clutch. Unlock leveling device. Release cable tensioner by hand and lock. In the driver's cab, shift transfer case lever to neutral. Transmission to neutral. Winch control lever in reverse. Now let us review the main points for operating the controls of the medium wrecker's powered recovery equipment. To operate the boom, controls are set in driver's cab and on rear of wrecker. Boom assembly movement is controlled from the crane cab. To operate the rear winch, controls are set in driver's cab and at rear winch assembly. To operate the front winch, Controls are set at front winch assembly and in driver's cab. A thorough knowledge of the procedures you have seen in this film will enable you to operate the wrecker safely and effectively.